Hello there, YouTube. My name is Dr. Carlo Ojed. I am a board-certified emergency physician with over 18 years of experience. I have a passion for patient education and technology, and joining the two, I create videos just like this one, mostly found at patienteducation.video, where I have them organized alphabetically, or you can use the search box on the right side of the page to search what you're looking for. In this patient education video, I will discuss the topic of heart palpitations. If you're watching this video, it's most likely because you are experiencing heart palpitations and would like to know more about them. Like, what are they? What causes them? Are they dangerous and how to stop them? In this video, I will do my best to educate you on this subject. So what are they? Palpitations are your own self-awareness of your heartbeat or pulse. Sometimes that is all it is, an awareness of your own heartbeat and nothing more. The heart beats like clockwork at regular speed between the beats of 60 to 90 beats per minute. And rhythm, each beat happens at the same intervals from each other with very minor variations for respiration. Palpitations are felt when the heartbeat is too slow, too fast, or just irregular. So, if you feel palpitations, the first thing that you should do is measure your own heartbeat. You can do this by feeling in your wrist, you can do this by feeling your carotid area of your neck, or you can do this by feeling in your femoral area. You must count the beats over 30 seconds, or better yet, a minute, so you get a more accurate read of your heartbeats per minute. Try to feel if the rate is slow, usually less than 60 beats per minute, or too fast, more than 90 beats per minute. Does it feel regular or does it feel irregular? The most common time of irregular heartbeats are premature atrial and premature ventricular contractions. In these kinds of palpitations, the heart sends an electrical signal originating from the atrium, the top part of the heart, or the ventricle, the bigger, lower part of the heart, respectively, so premature atrial and premature ventricular contractions. Regardless of where they originate in your heart, they feel the same way to the patient. A beat that is harder than a regular heartbeat and that is followed by a weird pause before the next heartbeat. If you are having these kinds of palpitations, try to count out how many of them are you having each minute. Are they happening at regular intervals, meaning do they happen every other heartbeat? Do they happen every third, every fourth? Do they happen in sets or alone? Or do they happen randomly a few times per minute? The ability of you being able to gather this data for the physician will be so valuable when you seek medical attention. Many times by the time you show up to see your doctor, the palpitation is happening rarely or not at all. The better information you can provide, the more likely the medical provider will be able to make an accurate assessment and therefore treatment. Assuming that the palpitations are not happening too frequently or in sets, then the most likely you're experiencing PACs, premature atrial, and PVCs, premature ventricular contractions. Most of the time, these occur due to strain on the heart muscle, and there are many different things that can do that. Stress, but I don't mean just stress emotionally, but that's one of them, but also stress by overworking your heart muscle, like high blood pressure would do that. If you have low blood count providing little oxygen, so the heart is actually suffering, it can cause palpitations. If you take stimulants of many different kinds, including caffeine, nicotine, but also other stimulating uh, substances like methamphetamines or any kind of amphetamine-like substance. And if you have uh, not a good rest or sleep, that can stress your heart to the point of showing up with palpitations. There's also other causes like electrolyte disturbances, having an abnormal level of various types of salts in your body like potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, etc. Also, if you happen to be dehydrated. There are many causes of palpitations. This is why you need to see a provider so you can get adequate tests and therefore adequate diagnosis and treatment. Treatment will be directed at correcting the underlying cause of the palpitations if such cause is identified during the medical evaluation. 
Sometimes, even if no cause is found, the physician may decide to start your on a rate control medication to slow and rest your heart, making these palpitations less frequent and thus less symptomatic to you, the patient. Some of these medications are metoprolol, atenolol, any kind of beta blocker medication that slows down the heart rate and slows lowers your blood pressure as well. There are other medications like calcium channel blockers, etc., but these are the most common. Sometimes heart palpitations are caused by electrical conduction issue. That means that the electrical signals are not traveling at the speed or rate that they normally should. These palpitations are potentially a lot more serious and need an accurate diagnosis to be able to treat it. It might require the placement of temporary or permanent pacemakers to restore normal electrical function to the heart. Other palpitations are associated with very fast heart rates, i.e. more than 110 or 120 beats per minute. Most of these tachycardias, fast arrhythmias, are potentially serious and do require a prompt diagnosis and treatment. If your rate is fast but regular, you're most likely experiencing SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. This kind of arrhythmia is a result of a short circuit in the heart that causes the electric impulses to travel fast and round and round and round, causing the heart to beat at rates of excess of 150 beats per minute. This arrhythmia is treated with vagal maneuvers, like asking the patient to cough hard, or hold the breath and bear down, or push their fist against their belly and bear down. There are many different kinds of vagal maneuvers, but they will attempt to do these vagal maneuvers to see if we can break the short circuit and stop the SVT. If these maneuvers don't work, then the provider must try other medications to reset your heart and turn you back into normal sinus rhythm. SVT is usually not dangerous for most people, especially young healthy people, but in people with underlying medical conditions, so such stress in the heart, going so fast and so hard for so long, can cause muscle injury to the heart, even myocardial ischemia, heart attacks. So proper blood tests need to be ordered as part of the medical evaluation of a patient who suffers from this kind of arrhythmia. If your heart rate is fast, but it's also irregular, so this can be due to atrial fibrillation or fibrillation of the atrium, the top part of the heart. I have a bunch of videos talking specifically about atrial fibrillation, and I will put those in the description below. Also, if you go to patienteducation.video, go under atrial fibrillation or search the, the search box on the right of the page, you should be able to find these videos and get more specific education about atrial fibrillation. If your palpitations are associated with chest pain, lightheadedness, dizziness, feeling like you're going to pass out or even passing out, shortness of breath, and other symptoms, if you have any of those, you do need urgent medical evaluation and the best place is the emergency department where you're going to have a board certified emergency physician check you out. The first step that will need to be done is to define what are these palpitations by performing an electrocardiogram. In, in Europe and stuff, they call them ECGs. In the United States, we call them EKGs, but it should be ECG, electrocardiogram. This gives a physician a graphical analysis of the electrical currents in the heart and therefore give the appropriate information needed for diagnosis. As mentioned before, our medical evaluation and diagnosis is depending on us catching the palpitations when they are occurring. And many times, by the, by the, by the time the patient gets to us, the palpitations are happening less frequently or not at all. So sometimes at discharge, we will schedule a heart monitor for the patient to wear for a day or even days or even a month to try to catch these palpitations as they are happening and whether or not they're having symptoms with the palpitations so we can properly diagnose them. But if you are proactive and serious about your health, then I want you to consider purchasing a cardia device like this one. 
This cardio device is an FDA approved device for the detection specifically of atrial fibrillation as well as some bradycardia, slow heart rhythms, and some tachycardias. But its usefulness goes far beyond what it's approved by the FDA. There are two versions of this device, the cardio device. There's a single lead and a six lead. This one is the six lead cardio device. The single lead version produces a medical grade tracing of the electrical conduction of your heart. And the six lead version produces six different ways to look at the electricity conduction of your heart. For comparison purposes, a hospital EKG produces 12 views, 12 leads of the electrical conduction of your heart. The device is designed to analyze your rhythm for abnormalities and it will advise you if it recognizes a significant abnormality. It will also allow you to save that recording to a PDF file that can then be shared through the app with an electrophysiologist or cardiologist that are hired and paid for by the app and then they can read it for you and send you an official interpretation. But also, you can take that file of the electrocardiogram that you took with the device and send it to your cardiologist, your friend or healthcare worker that you know, and they can look at this. Having this information readily available when you show up for an evaluation will surely expedite your diagnosis and treatment. And you might not have to wait for weeks or months for this Holter monitor device to catch it because you already came with an ECG. So, if you are experiencing palpitations, the sooner you get a medical grade tracing demonstrating what is happening to your heart, the sooner a diagnosis can be made and treatment started. So, I want you to consider purchasing a cardiac device. It costs 80 something dollars for the single lead version and 150 something dollars for the six lead version. I actually have both because I too suffer from palpitations from time to time. In my case, it's not atrial fibrillation, it's PVCs, premature ventricular conductions. And it usually happens after I switch from night shifts to day shifts to late shifts. It's that constant change that stresses your heart and causes for me to get palpitations. Also, working night shifts makes me drink more soda, caffeine, which in turn can worsen the palpitations. This video is not sponsored by this device. I just believe that the quality and accuracy of the product is great and I actually own one myself like I just said I experience palpitations and this helps me get an EKG on my own without having to go to the emergency department. If you have found this video helpful and you have a family member or yourself who suffers from bradycardia, tachydysrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, some kind of heart block or even heart disease, this is not meant to diagnose heart attacks. The, the website will say this is not a heart attack diagnostic um, ECG. However, it will produce the heart attack specific abnormalities in that EKG or ECG. Therefore, it can actually diagnose it, but they can't go as far as saying that just because of legal matters. Again, this is a six lead ECG device. So the value of that information is just tremendous. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, especially share with someone who has problems with palpitations or will find this information useful.